Indian household, their spendings, a third of expenditure is usually used on food and non-alcoholic beverages. Now, a lot of people might not take this too seriously, but a third of your spending is about 33% of your total salary. You're using that on only food and non-alcoholic beverages, not even the ones for sherehe. Of course, 14.6%, around 15%, goes to electricity, water, housing, and gas, things that are very essential for living, and 10% goes to transport. Kenyans move around a lot. We go to work, we go to school, we go to do our businesses. 10% usually goes on transportation. This is just an average of the common household within you know Kenya 8.1% goes to restaurants and accommodation when you're you know having maybe family gatherings or you're meeting up with your friends 8.1% typically goes into that and 7.7% goes on information and communication that is your cellular device when you're sending emails on your internet you're calling people 7.7% 3.74%, around 4%, goes on furnishings and household items. Those are usually, you know, your wall paintings, when you're maybe buying a new couch, when you have a new TV set. People are usually very excited about those things. Around 3.74% uh, goes into that. And around 3% goes on clothing and footwear. Now, of course, I have to ask you, uh, David, if you could just tell us, of these spendings, do you believe that Kenyans are making the correct decision? Thank you very much uh, to our listeners. Alfred Madhu is my name. Mm -hmm. I'm a financial advisor. I give people advice on all sorts of investments right. to help them make best decisions that will give them security for their future. Right. In terms of how Kenyans spend their money, mm -hmm. we are majorly a spending community. Right. People are not looking at what would give them a bit of cushion mm -hmm. in the bad times. Mm -hmm. We spend as though it's a competition. Right. We make money, <laughs> and the better chunk of that money is actually going into lifestyle expenses. Right. Uh, for the first time, you, you, you meet some of these people and you talk to them about how about leaving some little money mm -hmm. that will be able to form an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. That looks like a subject for the first time. Right. So what I'm trying to say here is that I think for me, there's a complete misunderstanding of mm -hmm. how people should land their budget. Right. You need to write a budget down. Look at what is my income. Mm -hmm. Is this the money that I make or is this money that I'm borrowing? Right. You do not put yourself in a lifestyle that you cannot afford because mm -hmm. that is where most of the Kenyans are failing. Mm -hmm. You are forcing things to happen. Mm -hmm. That your current income can only sustain a particular lifestyle but to choose to go build it. Right. So what happens now is that for you to be able to meet that gap, you start borrowing. You start digging a hole in your, in your, in your, in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And soon after, everything starts clubbering down. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, we just have to rewrite the narrative. Right. Look at what portion of my income mm -hmm. will go into the recurrent expenses. Mm -hmm. The consumer boss, for example. Mm -hmm. Is it an essential expense? Mm -hmm. And then what portion of my money would go into the non-essential expenses? Mm -hmm. And what portion of my money do I want to put aside mm -hmm. to build a buffer, mm -hmm. the security, call it the emergency fund? Mm -hmm. And of course, don't forget that you got old age coming. Mm -hmm. You got other medium term obligations such as educating your children. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to build a house one day. Maybe you want to buy an apartment one day. Maybe you want to do an, uh, you know, an upcountry home one day. You start putting aside a fund that can help you achieve that agenda. Right. And of course, a portion will also go into long-term savings for retirement. Mm -hmm. Did you know that a lot of Kenyans are working to retirement retarded? Right. We got mm -hmm. crisis at old age. Mm -hmm. Bills cannot be paid. Right. Old people are relying on their children to pay some of these bills. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, what went wrong? Right. When you see people suffering at old age, mm -hmm. it is not a one-day event. It's been a journey. Mm -hmm. You failed for many years ago, and you kept failing. Right. Now what you are seeing is the aftermath of the entire uh, you know, situation. Right. So I think for me, we just have to go back to the basics, understand, mm -hmm. sit down and be guided on how do I do my budget, mm -hmm. what do I need to take care of now, mm -hmm. and build a certain level of security for your tomorrow. Right. Yes. Alfred, you've said Kenyans are spending like they're in competition, which, you know, judging by the way we typically, you know, divide our money within the month, that could be true. Uh, Engineer Elizabeth. Yes. 
14.6% going into electricity, water, housing, and gas. Electricity is very essential. We're in a new age. We just had a story of, you know, one of the counties, that Makweni County, where people have not had electricity for a couple of years. A lot of the country now has electricity, 14.6%. What are some of the solutions we can take up to cut on this cost? Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so on cutting electricity is just doing small things. Number one, check the bulbs in your house. Are they all LED? Mm -hmm. And if they are LED, how, much, how many watts are they each? Mm -hmm. Do you know? For you? Um, I, I would assume, because most of the bulbs in my house are, are different, mm -hmm. there are some rooms where I want, you know, the yellow one, uh -huh. and then there's the really white one. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> now that's the big problem, because right. you might find one of the yellow ones mm -hmm. is 20 watts, right. yet one of the white ones is 5 watts, right. yet you can find yellow ones which are all 5 watts. Mm -hmm. So that is where it starts. You need to understand what is consuming the most electricity in your house. Mm -hmm. Another thing is how we operate the equipment we have in our house. Right. Um, there are people who walk into the fridge in and out as if it's a security gate. You open, you close, you open, you close. You're still losing. making a decision of what you're about but to But it's eat. losing heat and right. it's, you're using more electricity. Mm -hmm. So you need to already have made up your mind because you already know what is in the fridge. Mm -hmm. It's not going to appear something new if right. it's not there. <laughs> so those are the small things. Now, the other thing is not many people take advantage of natural lighting. Mm -hmm. Your lights are always on. Right. Switch them off if you don't need. Switch and plug electronics that are not there. Mm -hmm. And then when you're going to buy electronics, look at the consumption mm -hmm. of the electronics. Right. You do not need a TV that consumes 150 watts, right. yet you can get the same size that consume 90 watts. Mm -hmm. So it's about being smart in choosing appliances that are not um, consuming so much electricity. Right. Then the other option, which is my area of expertise, is solar. Mm -hmm. We should all go solar. Mm -hmm. if, if there's someone in Makweni right now who's listening, mm -hmm. solar is your option. Right. And actually, <laughs> the, the project was a solar project, so clearly that is a solution that a yes. lot of people yes. should be taking. And I have to come back to you, Alfred. You know, there are costs which are luxuries, and there are costs that are essential. Kenyans typically use 8.1% on restaurants and accommodation. What's your thoughts on this? <laughs> I think the first thing that, especially at such a time when the year is still very, very new, mm -hmm. good for Kenyans to realize that the holiday is over. Right. We now have to go back to work mm -hmm. and uh, start building the nation, make money and save as much as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very important to, to take that aspect of planning very, very carefully. Right. Your next Christmas is coming about 11 and a half months from now. Mm -hmm. Can we start putting money aside for it? Mm -hmm. We don't need to see people getting severely disrupted mm -hmm. just a month to the, 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 the holiday month. Mm -hmm. You should have prepared early enough and started putting funds aside early enough so that at the time you get to that finish line or the holiday season, you are actually not going out of your way to look for funds that are never banned for. A lot of people go to uh, Shadocks, mm -hmm. some go to circles, mm -hmm. others go to banks, others resort to borrowing from friends and relatives mm -hmm. at that holiday month. Mm -hmm. Why can't you start that journey early? Mm -hmm. Start putting money aside. Right. So by the time you get into December, mm -hmm. you already have enough based, of course, on the budget. Mm -hmm. And don't go to places which you didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you have plans to take your family, family to Mombasa, mm -hmm. come up with a budget. How much will it take me? What kind of hotel do I need to, to go? Mm -hmm. What, how much did it cost me? Mm -hmm. Start paying for that early. Because, right. of course, for some of the hotels, mm -hmm. if you pay in advance, mm -hmm. you get discounts. Right. If right now you're booking for your next uh, you know, uh, uh, hotel accommodation for mm -hmm. the next season, mm -hmm. chances are high that you'll be paying at half the rate. Right. Why pay the ninth hour? Because Kenyans are people of ninth hour. Right. We do everything ninth hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pay for taxes, Last minute. ninth hour. <laughs> paying for bills, ninth hour. People pay for their rent, ninth hour. Mm -hmm. Let's change that narrative. That if you're planning to take your family to uh, Mombasa in December, right. identify the hotel, mm -hmm. let them tell you how much it's going to cost you that time, mm -hmm. start paying for it. And of course, right now, you can be able to negotiate your terms, you can be able to get discounts, right. but you don't suffer as much as ordinary people suffer mm -hmm. that ninth hour. Right. Yeah. Alfred, you're typically saying 
Do not be a last minute person. Yes. Prior planning is very, very important. Mm -hmm. A lot of Kenyans don't take this very seriously, but we're always, when's the deadline? I'll go a day before <laughs> or on the day itself. And speaking of prior planning, of course, there are discounts sometimes. There are seasons where you, when you can buy a couple of things. We know there's, you know, Black November. That's when a lot of people buy things. Engineer uh, uh, Nyambura, I'm coming to you as a woman right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and not typically how we say it on social media, but I'm coming to you as a woman right now. When it comes to furnishings and household items, what maybe are some of the months that people should be taking advantage of when they're going to buy those things? Um, so for furnishing and households, I believe, as you've mentioned, Black Friday is mm -hmm. a good month. Mm -hmm. However, for me personally, what I do is, if, for example, I've, I've identified a piece of furniture in a certain shop. Right. I always go back to their online um, and check which months do they offer these sales because it's always 30% off, 20% off. Mm -hmm. And then I start planning towards that mm -hmm. instead of buying now under pressure. Mm -hmm. And then also in terms of furnishing and household items, mm -hmm. what are we doing with the old items mm -hmm. that we need to keep replacing them so often? Right. Yeah. So, because a, a dedicated almost 4%. Yeah, because you can't be changing paintings every other day. Right. Unless... <laughs> <laughs> there's a problem right you can't be changing your table every other every six months mm -hmm. so it's also maybe some time to just sit and reflect and think about maybe hiring professionals mm -hmm. to help you with your interior decor to save you on the money that you'll spend right. you keep redoing things over and over again mm -hmm. yeah and, so, and now that you've mentioned having in, an interior decorator, a lot of Kenyans don't take advantage of professionals in different fields because they say, ah, that's an added cost, I'll go and buy it myself. And then you find that you don't know where the discounts are. You don't know where to get dupes yeah. of whatever you need to be getting. Maybe if you could give advice to Kenyans, what are some of the things or what are some of the steps they should take before they do a purchase or they make a purchase? Due diligence, mm -hmm. number one. You need to understand where your product is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in my industry, if it's solar, you need to understand what kind of warranty does this product come with, how many years, and what exactly does that warranty mean? Because warranty could mean a lot of things to different companies. Mm -hmm. Number two, you also need to see mm -hmm. practically where these examples of these products are working. Because sometimes if you go, like if you walk to River Road right now, right. you'll buy a version of the same thing in five different versions, mm -hmm. which ideally they should work, but the, the difference in, the, in how they've been constructed is what uh, differentiates them. Mm -hmm. So one product is 5,000 bob cheaper, and right. you go for it, mm -hmm. but you replace it after six months. Mm -hmm. So you bought it at 5,000 bob cheaper, but in a period of one and a half years, mm -hmm. you've already bought it five times. Mm -hmm. So did you really save on costs? Mm -hmm. So due diligence is very key. Next, ask the experts. Mm -hmm. If you're not a carpenter, you're not a carpenter. So, Period. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a, a solar expert, you're not. Mm -hmm. If you're not a financial expert, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, there, 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 there's a lot of information even online if you cannot afford it. So we are talking about cutting costs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information that I'm sure even Alfred here has put out right. just to educate people on how to be diligent with your money. Mm -hmm. So why aren't we using these resources that are already there that are free? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make day. any sense. Yes. You could just go on the internet. Google nowadays is close to free because there's a lot of Wi-Fi. And when we come back, we tell you of the budgeting process. What are some of the things that you should be prioritizing? We make use of our, fi our financial analyst who's already in the studio. We go for a very short break. We'll be right back. Right, welcome back to the marketplace. As a consumer or as a Kenyan, do you know your spending habits? Do you know how much you usually spend in a month? Do you budget for it? Do you stick to your budget? And how much do you usually keep for savings? Of course, it's always good to have a bit of statistics to have perspective, to know exactly what it is that we use, how we use it, what as a country are we doing about it? Now, household final cons consumption expenditure, which is, you know, formerly known as the private consumption, is the market value of all goods and services, including durable products, which are electronics and gadgets and machines, and which excludes purchases of dwellings, which is rent, right? 
Now, this stood at 76.38% of the gross domestic product. What that essentially means is that usually the household final consumption for all of us Kenyans was about 80% of what we're worth as a country. We are major spenders. Now, I have to come to you, Alfred. What do you think is maybe one of the things that is pushing Kenyans to be such, you know, huge spenders? What is it in our culture that forces us to spend so much? Thank you very much. Uh, I think I start off by telling you that there are four money personalities. Right. Top is the spender. Mm -hmm. Second is the saver. Mm -hmm. The other one is the dreamer. And the final one is the investor. Let me give just a brief description of who each of these categories is. Right. The spender is this type of a person that majorly spends on lifestyle. Mm -hmm. he, he or she is literally on every credit card, mm -hmm. borrowing from every corner of this world, borrowing from friends, borrowing from uh, circles where they belong, borrowing from the bank, borrowing from Shylock, they are all over. And when you look at why they are borrowing this money, mm -hmm. it's not to be able to meet the essential obligations. Mm -hmm. It is for lifestyle. These are people who keep changing their mobile numbers, for example, in Kenya. Right. Because they know that those that they owe are running after them. Mm -hmm. And they keep moving from one place where they live to another. Today they're in Umoja, tomorrow they're in Donholm. Mm -hmm. That time they are in, in, in Morongo, they are all over the place. Right. They're running away from some people. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the next category of people. Mm -hmm. These are the, 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 the people that call the dreamers. Right. Dreamers will always talk about the big things they want to achieve in life. Mm -hmm. The only misalignment is on investing. Right. That yes, you talk about wanting to take your children to these type of schools. Mm -hmm. You want to have this kind of a retirement home. Mm -hmm. You want to be driving this sort of a car. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing with your money today? Mm -hmm. Are you putting sufficient amounts aside mm -hmm. to be able to build into achieving those goals? Mm -hmm. These are the dreamers. Right. I want to take my children to St. Andrews truly. Mm -hmm. I'll be living in current five-bedroom house. I'll have a swimming pool. I'll have all these things. Right. But am I saving towards that? Now, the next category is of people that call the savers. The savers know the need to put money aside. The only challenge with them is that you know you're earning 300,000 shillings, mm -hmm. you spend 250, so there will always be a 50,000 shillings that you leave in the bank account. Mm -hmm. After one year, the 50,000 shillings would have accumulated to say 600,000. Mm -hmm. So the only place that the savers fail mm -hmm. is they are not very cognizant of the fact that money left in the bank account and savings account right. may not necessarily be giving you any value uh, you know, for, their, uh, for, for their money against inflation. Mm -hmm. So we need such people to be sensitized mm -hmm. on better avenues through which they can invest and get better values and better returns on their money. Mm -hmm. The final person is the investor. We only have 2% of genuine investors in Kenya. Two percent. Mm -hmm. The rest are fake investors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the people who understand exactly what they need to do with their money now, mm -hmm. take sufficient security on their assets, and be able to leave enough room for their emergency, right. be able to take care of the retirement, mm -hmm. and above all, do a succession plan. Mm -hmm. These are only two percent of the people. Mm -hmm. These are guys that work with accountability partners. Mm -hmm. They understand their risk appetite. They will not just go into any sort of investment. When they go into an investment, they have assessed. They have done their due diligence. Mm -hmm. That the moment they go, if, for example, into infrastructure bonds, mm -hmm. they know what they want to achieve in that space of time. Right. Now, now coming to your question, mm -hmm. as a country, I started by telling you that we are major spenders. Right. We are consumers. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why you can see on average, mm -hmm. even at a national level, we are spending about 8% of what we make. Right. Leaving no room mm -hmm. for building cushion, mm -hmm. leaving no room for investment. Mm -hmm. It's a gentleman called Warren Buffett, mm -hmm. and who is among the richest in the world. Yes. According to Warren Buffett, mm -hmm. he says that we should be spending the balance of investment. Right. That when you make your money, mm -hmm. the money your money hits the bank mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. You should first of all invest, mm -hmm. and then spend on the balance. Right. But what do you do ordinarily in Kenya? Mm -hmm. When you make our money, you spend. We spend first, mm -hmm. and then if there will be anything left, which hardly is, yes. we will invest. Mm -hmm. There are people who are at 60, there are people who are at 57, there are people who are at 65, mm -hmm. and they have never put money aside. Mm -hmm. Everything they make, they consume. Everything they make, they consume. Mm -hmm. Shocks and surprises only come at the finish line. Mm -hmm when your productivity has gone to nil mm -hmm. and you still have obligations to be met. For example, medical. Right. Yeah. People are depending on children, they are relying on relatives, they are depending on everyone mm -hmm. to pay bills. They are, we are a country of WhatsApp groups. <laughs> right. Everyone wants to rely on somebody else mm -hmm. to meet an obligation that ought to have been yours. Right. So it's a narrative we have to work on, mm -hmm. change.
Right. People coming to see financial advisors will help them to understand at this particular stage, mm -hmm. what do I need to do with my money right. to be able to make the best use and ensure that I'm also leaving loom mm -hmm. for emergency. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving, leaving loom mm -hmm. to take care of my contractual media term goals mm -hmm. and also taking care of my old age in terms of retirement investment. Right. Yes. Alfred, I'm sure you've left a lot of Kenyans with a lot of things that they should be thinking <laughs> about right now. What type, of cons what type of spender are you? Are you a consumer? Do you invest? Do you just spend without thinking? And now I have to throw it at you, Virginia Nyambura. What type of spender are you? And of course, <laughs> tell us, if you are an investor, what are some of the ways in which you've invested? All right. So I will say I am an investor mm -hmm. and I've started small. Mm -hmm. So I've set up my emergency funds mm -hmm. and uh, I've set up for big, big expenditures, for example, mm -hmm. um, skincare products. Right. Women. It's an essential. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's an essential. But one. it's also very expensive. Right. And they, uh, they always end at on 15th of the month when you have no money. <laughs> and for all of them. All of them at, at the once. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. And now you need some 10, 15,000 to go and buy all of them if you want to buy all of them at once. Right. So it's unreasonable for you to go to Mshwari. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have, I have saved that money enough to last me at least for the next two years mm -hmm. in terms of those consumables, which are runoffs, because you know every quarter you need to refill mm -hmm. or every half year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working with at the moment. Mm -hmm. At a household uh, level, um, currently 30% uh, of our electricity bill is, is slashed. Mm -hmm. We're using solar. Right. So that does the lights mm -hmm. and the sockets. Mm -hmm. So the only um, part we're using KPLC is for the kitchen and the right. showers. Right. Because we are, we're living in a rented apartment, so mm -hmm. it's a bit tough to convince your landlord you want to install more things on his mm -hmm. roof. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and it's essential that Kenyans know, just like Engineer Nyambura here, that it's not always your own house where you need to go and buy solar panels for. There are some ways that you can cut down on your electricity, the smart meter being one of them. Yeah. And of course, you know some of the things you use your bulbs some of the el electric gadgets that you use your machines the washing machine you know within your house are you using things that are more cost effective and some of the time some of these electronics the initial prices are a bit higher yes what would you advise Kenyans who are looking to buy these you know better machines but they don't necessarily want to part with more money for me I'll say look at it long term mm -hmm. so if you if you buy a, an old washing machine right that is going to consume more electricity, it means over a period of one year you'll pay more bills. Mm -hmm. So if your bills will ex uh, exceed by 10%, 20%, mm -hmm. is it worth it? Right. So, and again, capitalize on discounts. Mm -hmm. Some of these machines that we buy is not a matter of life and death. Right. You can wait a bit longer to save for that uh, more en energy efficient appliance. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like you woke up one day and you didn't have clean clothes. You right. already have a system in place to ensure that you have clean clothes. Mm -hmm. A washing machine is coming in as a, an, a, an assistant of, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So instead of rushing into buying this, save up. Right slow but sure, look at, the, at it long term. Mm -hmm. Because also getting rid of these um, energy f consuming machines is also right. very expensive. Right. Because like for me, I had a one washing machine which consumes a lot of power, so I even disconnected it. But you can't sell it to anyone. Right. Unless you sell it as scrap metal. Mm -hmm. So you don't want, also want to have such things in your house. Right. You're just accumulating old machines that you can't use. Now that you've started this new lifestyle in January yes. 2024. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing at a time. And then in terms of power consumption, there are also some things that are unnecessary. So you don't really need, um, for example, there are people who have two TVs in one room. Right. Why? The luxury of it all. <laughs> but you never use them. You, they, they are all showing the same thing at the same time. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I think it's just looking at it, at how much are you looking to save in a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to cut down your electricity bill by 30%, mm -hmm. it means that 30% is money that you can set aside right. for one thing or another. Mm -hmm. For example, an emergency fund. That's like basic level. Right. Bare minimum, what everyone should have. Right. And, and speaking of basic level, Alfred, uh, the Kenyans who are watching this right now, of course, uh, are wondering... Now that I have all this information, I am now, you know, open to the idea of saving, buying more cost effective, you know, machines, but I am thinking of how I will budget this money that I have. If you could just take us through, you know, a typical budget for a normal Kenyan, 
what are some of the things that I should prioritize when I'm drafting my budget for the month? We've got a 50-30-20 rule. Right. Where 50% is about what you're doing as a family, yourself, your essentials, mm -hmm. your rent, your food, all those things. Mm -hmm. Maximum for all that. Right. Should never go beyond 50%. Mm -hmm. You got an element 30% here. Mm -hmm. This 30% will take care of the emergency funds mm -hmm. to take care of their medium term uh, contractual obligations. You right. got school fees to pay, for example. Mm -hmm. And a question came up the other day. What is the best time to pay school fees? Right. A parent was asking me, and I told the best time to pay school fees is when you're going to pick your child from school. Right. For holiday. Before, before they leave, yes. even. Like now, kids day. came home on <laughs> a November. Right. When we're going to pick them in November, mm -hmm. that would have been the best time to pay the school fees. Mm -hmm. Rather than wait until the ninth hour. You know, some of the schools, mm -hmm. like for example, where my children are, mm -hmm. if you prepare your school fees, you get a discount. Right. So why don't you pay in advance? Mm -hmm. So this 30% is supposed to take care of the emergency and the contractual obligations, including the school fees. Right. And you got this element of 20%. 20% mm -hmm. should go into building your long-term security, right. retirement for that matter. Mm -hmm. You should be asking yourself today, mm -hmm. for the years that you've been working, mm -hmm. how much of your income have you pushed into long-term savings? Right. And the saddest thing for all of Kenyans is that, yes, at times you're so determined to build your portfolio in such a manner, it's so organized, mm -hmm. but hardly two years, you are liquidating your long-term investments mm -hmm. to, take care of, to take care of an emergency. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens with the discipline among we the Kenyans. Right. You start so well, mm -hmm. but along the way, mm -hmm. me, I don't know what spirit comes in. Mm -hmm that people immediately lose focus and they start doing things that they never planned, mm -hmm. things that were scheduled for this year, they are not even going to be anywhere you know, in, your, in your diary anymore. Mm -hmm. You'll be revisiting this end of the year mm -hmm. and you'll have a whole list of things that you had planned to do but never did. Right. People have talked about their new, new year resolutions mm -hmm. less than three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Some of the people have already forgotten mm -hmm. what they had intended to, mm -hmm. to achieve this year. Mm -hmm. So when you have a goal that makes so much sense to you your family, and the future that you want to have, mm -hmm. write it down. Right. Work even with an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is on that path, maybe a few steps ahead of you, mm -hmm. let them work with you. Mm -hmm. Let them share with them what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So at any time you're about to drift you know, out of that path, right. maybe, by the way, Alfred, you said that you want to achieve this, mm -hmm. how are you progressing on it? They'll always get you back, uh, back on focus. Mm -hmm. But Kenyans want to work alone, you go right. buy plots alone, no one knows why you're buying those plots, right. you die, everything is lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the money that was for investment is lost in that way. Mm -hmm. even, the, even at family level, mm -hmm. you're doing investments which you can never disclose to your, your spouse. Right. That's a waste. Mm -hmm. That's wasted. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, the whole idea of uh, writing our narrative will start with planning. Right. And what you plan to achieve, write it down. Mm -hmm. Share it to the people that matter to you mm -hmm. so that you can then walk that journey together. Right. But as long as you're keeping things secret, you don't want to discuss money, discuss money matters with your family, with your spouses, mm -hmm. you'll never be able to achieve the agenda. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hopelessness at old age. Mm -hmm. And especially we the men are severely affected. Right. Because most of the men don't want to listen to advice. Mm -hmm. So I continuously talk to the men and telling them, you know what? We have to do things differently. Right. Yes, our fathers never involved us in their financial conversations. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that at this particular stage of our life. Right. We want to be involving our spouses. We want to also be involving our children. Right. You start talking to your children about money matters so that mm -hmm. that helps them to make a good foundation. As they start working, they'll be remembering the things that their mom and dad told them, that we start with an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Once you build an emergency fund that can take care of three to six times of your monthly running expenses, mm -hmm. then you will go to the next phase of your life, start building the contractual investments, mm -hmm. start building uh, investments that can take care of your contractual obligations. Mm -hmm. That should be the kind of engagement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And let's gain some perspective before we go to what do we do for the future? How do we plan for the future? Before we delve into that, let's just have some perspective with our very final slide as we look at you know, some of the things or some of the spending habits of a lot of Kenyans. Now, consumer spending stands at about 7.13 trillion as at last year. Consumer spending, we've said, is the amount of money that Kenyans typically spend which is almost our entire GDP. If we took the entire you know, country, Kenya, we took it you know, and sold it, you would find that almost 80% of it we've already spent. In comparison to around 6.9 trillion in the last year, so it's risen 
by almost, let's say, from 6.9 trillion to 7.13 trillion. To have this in perspective, from 1964, we had 48 million being consumer spending habits. The rates are rising really, really fast. Now, let's not put this you know, in perspective at the moment. Let's think about the future. Now, you're thinking of diversifying your portfolio. What exactly can I do to earn money? People usually say you can't be rich from your salary alone. Alfred, I'll throw this back to you once again. What are some of the ways that I could diversify my portfolio to ensure that I have money streaming in that's not just my salary? Good question. Um, let me tell you something. Um, when I started my, my career as a financial advisor way mm -hmm. back in 1998, mm -hmm. and I had this mentor of mine uh, and who was my boss who encouraged me from the day one, mm -hmm to start putting money aside for my, 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 my long-term goals, mm -hmm. and which I gladly took. Of course, it was a tough step because my income was not much. So dedicating 3,000 shillings out of a salary of 13,000 mm -hmm. was not a very simple decision. Mm -hmm. And of course, in my very formative stages, because at that particular time, you don't even have enough clothes to go to work. Mm -hmm. You need to buy stuff for the house, you, need, you know, all that. Right. But I did it. Mm -hmm. I saved through the years and enough times I was broke. Mm -hmm. Enough times I was broke. Mm -hmm. That I kept telling myself I should redeem this investment at this stage. Mm -hmm. But something else kept telling me, no, 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 keep going. Other people have done it before mm -hmm. and they've achieved. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that I want to bring to you here is that I maintained that investment and kept reviewing the amount all the way until last year in May. Right. You can imagine maintaining an, an investment account from 1998 mm -hmm. to 2023. Mm -hmm. That was long term. Mm -hmm. But something has happened out of that, mm -hmm. and which I also want the listeners to hear. Right. The money that I got, which I don't have necessarily disclosed, mm -hmm. I kept <laughs> reviewing that amount mm -hmm. from 3,000 upwards to quite some substantial amount. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us maybe in figures Range. generally? <laughs> <laughs> so that we can have, you know, some hope. People, <laughs> we can some, see. Some people wouldn't even understand how this happened. Right. But imagine mm -hmm. moving from 3,000 shilling savings mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm to a level of about 340,000 shillings saving every month. Right. The total savings per in month, period, that is. The entire saving in the entire period was about 17 million. Right. And which, which gave me back 38 million. Mm -hmm. So this 38 million shillings now mm -hmm. has formed for me a new stream of income so right. quietly. Mm -hmm. I've pushed that money mm -hmm. into infrastructure bonds. Mm -hmm. I got this bond that was released to the market mm -hmm. in June. Right. A seven year. Mm -hmm. with a coupon of 15.83. Mm -hmm. So pushing that money there, what right. now that has done is that mm -hmm. every six months you're getting some, some payout, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a coupon. And that money now will actually be able to take care of a lot of my long-term and medium-term goals that were pending. Right. So I think every person can start where they are. Mm -hmm. The problem in Kenya is that they want to climb the tree from up, right. down. Mm -hmm. Let's start from, from our humble beginning. Right. That yes, my salary is 30,000. Mm -hmm. Out of these 30,000, Alfred Mathu has recommended that we maintain the standard of 22.5% savings. Right. Mm. Whatever amount you make, mm -hmm. just put aside 22.5% into an investment program mm -hmm. and let it land into the long term. What will happen is that, one, it will improve your discipline on spending. Mm -hmm. You not just spend your money anyhow. You'll be spending very, very carefully because already some of it has gone out into the investment. Mm -hmm. So you're left with less. Mm -hmm. You will not just be going into lifestyle expenses. Right. And then, of course, giving these investments a period of five, ten years, mm -hmm. it will come back to you as a lump sum. Mm -hmm. Now, the major life goals that you have, you wanted to build a house, mm -hmm. you want to have a good money market fund account, mm -hmm. you wanted to have a good pension account, mm -hmm. this money can help you achieve that agenda. Mm -hmm. And what will happen now is that that immediately becomes a passive income for you. Right. you know, there are people who've built their money market fund accounts today to levels of 10, 15, uh, 15 20 million shillings. Mm -hmm. And now that is already giving them another two, 300,000 shillings every month quietly. Right. And for their bills, either for, you know, even for the children. Mm -hmm call it school fees, mm -hmm. that you know the 200,000 shillings that you're making from your money market mm -hmm. is enough to cover that standing expense mm -hmm. for the children. Mm -hmm. why, why should you wait until the ninth hour, mm -hmm. spend all the money, and then start regretting that, I wish I'd done that, I wish I'd done that. A lot of the people that I meet, mm -hmm. they have only one thing that they tell me, I wish I did this, Ari. Right. I wish I had met you, Ari. Mm -hmm. Now, the young people who ought to be taking this gospel and take, you know, execute mm -hmm. the portion that they need to, Okay. are not doing it. Mm -hmm. What will happen is that 10, 15 years later, then, that's when they start looking back. Hey, if only I had done that, right. I would have achieved this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it's about planning. Mm -hmm. Let them 
engage us. Let them engage the financial advisors. Mm -hmm. And we are many. It's not just Alfred Math. We are enough people in this industry right. from all the companies who will be able to help you understand how to go about your financial planning, mm -hmm. be able to prioritize a certain percentage to take care of your emergencies, mm -hmm. be able to prioritize a certain amount to go into contractual investments, right. and also help you to build a retirement fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think for me, we are always available to be able to help people to achieve this thing. Right. Yes. And Alfred, you've, you've brought up a very interesting aspect. Mm -hmm. A lot of the youth usually say, you know, live fast. We're, we're living in the moment. You know, right now we're having fun, we're going out, but then in the future, a lot of the people don't have a retirement plan. Engineer Nyambura, you are part of the youth, <laughs> right? Do you have a retirement plan A and B? What are some of the things that you usually do every single month to ensure that whatever money is streaming in continues streaming in? And you, what are the backup plans that you have? So, yes, I do have a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. um, what I've done is automate Right. I've automated my, my, my debits to the retirement fund. So as long as the money has hit the accounts, it goes directly out to the, to, to, for pension, um, for emergency fund, ETC. Mm. Once you automate that, right. there's no way, unless you go and intentionally cancel it, and mm -hmm. you, you'll have to do it, and it will, you'll feel guilty for doing it. So just automate it and let it run. Right. Then for me, what I will say as my advice to anyone, mm -hmm. if you don't want to do a budget, mm -hmm. track your expenses for three months. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, just write track for down. three months, write it down. Mm -hmm. There are apps where you can do that. Mm -hmm. Then after three months, you will want to do a budget. Right. Because you'll realize maybe you took too many Ubers, mm -hmm. which were not necessary. Mm -hmm. You'll realize maybe you ate out too many times, mm -hmm. yet at the same month you had done shopping for the household, mm -hmm. which expired. <laughs> so you wasted money right. on both ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so start with, just do your expenses for three months and look at it. And don't, don't just anything you spend, even if it's five shillings, mm -hmm. say today I bought a sweet for five shillings. Mm -hmm. Then you'll see how many sweets you've eaten in three months. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that your transactions on your on your on your on sending money, mm -hmm. you've spent three thousand shillings, which could have been put aside. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and usually people, you know, we usually dismiss such small sums. We say, you know, that's not much. It's just three thousand in a month. You yeah. Know, we, you only but in a year is that is six thousand. Right. In ten years is three hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> if you had put that three thousand in money markets, right, it will have gained a, a good amount of interest in those five years, right. which is money that you don't have now mm -hmm. because you've already spent. As you've said, we are a spending nation. We are a spending nation now. As we were giving all of these sentiments, unfortunately, time was running, and <laughs> now we need to start wrapping, wrapping it up. Alfred, as you talk to Kenyans right now, what final advice would you give the common Mwanainchi who is a typical spender? You know what, uh, there, you know, as she was talking, I remembered something. There are people that have drunk their retirement homes. Right. <laughs> that Every day, you just consume two beers. Every day, two beers. Every day, two beers. One and for the road. And you've been drinking the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. If you look at the sum total of the money that has gone into drinking, mm -hmm. that actually took away the big dream of a retirement home. So start small, but start now. In fact, it's a, it's a success formula that they say, you have to think big. Think of that big goal that you want to achieve. You have to start small. Why? Because we've got limited resources. But then you have to start now. Think big, start small, but start now. Starting now is killing procrastination because mm -hmm. a lot of Kenyans have been killed or they have lost their dreams because of procrastinating. Mm -hmm. That everything you're saying, ah, I can do this next week. Mm -hmm. I can do this next month. I'm only 25. I am only 28. Mm -hmm. See, I'll do these things when I get married. Right. I'll do this, these things when I get my first child. Mm -hmm. I'll do these things when I get my second child. Mm -hmm. Procrastinating has killed a lot of potential dreams. With that aside, mm -hmm. let me say what. There's only one thing that I would like to tell our listeners today. Mm -hmm. No one plans to fail. Mm -hmm. People only fail to plan. Right. So the whole conversation that we have had this evening mm -hmm. takes us back to one subject, mm -hmm. financial planning. Right. If you really want to plan and achieve your long-term, short-term, and medium-term goals, mm -hmm. you need a financial advisor to work with you. Mm -hmm. An expert who understands the journey. Mm -hmm. Don't go for a bright person mm -hmm. because they will not help you. Go for experts like myself. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to help you demystify the whole understanding of financial planning mm -hmm. and I'll help you take the right steps at this particular point. Right. Whatever you're doing with your money now mm -hmm. will actually tell us if you did the right things.
10 years later. We might right. not. It's like cancer. I was telling her earlier. Mm -hmm. Financial mismanagement is like cancer. Right. You will not know that you have cancer until it's stage 4, stage, mm -hmm. stage 3, it's stage 4. too late. Mm -hmm. Similarly, financial planning, we are not going to know that you're doing the wrong things with your money right. until you are on the finish line. When you start seeing you depending on others. Right. When you start seeing you doing fundraisings. Mm -hmm. When you start seeing you retiring hopeless. Mm -hmm. So you got to do the right things. Insist on doing the right things when it comes to money matters. Because there's right. no correct way of doing the, the wrong things with money. Right. Just go for, for, for the right understanding of every step mm -hmm. so that you can execute at the right time. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course now, Engineer Nyambura, what are your final sentiment, sentiments to Kenyans on cutting on costs, one, and two, planning for the future? On cutting on costs, for me, I'll say, let's go solar. Mm -hmm. You don't have an excuse. Solar is not for people who do not have KPLC. Mm -hmm. Solar is not for the rich. <laughs> solar is not for big factories. Mm -hmm. Solar is for everyone. Mm -hmm. And as I've given myself as an example, mm -hmm. I have installed solar in my rented apartment. So anyone can do it mm -hmm. and it will save you. You can reduce up to 50% mm -hmm. or even more of your electricity bill. Right. And that is money that you can save for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. We are living in very tough economic times and it will only get tougher. Mm -hmm. So every small coin must count. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot live under the luxury that hopefully things will turn around. Yes. That, is, that is hopefully, mm -hmm. it, it's, not, it's not realistic. Right. So you have to start doing the difficult things. Mm -hmm. For me, my challenge to Kenyans will be mm -hmm. um, to reduce expenses. Mm -hmm. It's the most difficult thing anyone can be asked to do. Mm -hmm. Because reducing expenses for one person can mean moving to a smaller house, mm -hmm. changing the, the schools your kids go to. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we have to do if we are going to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as always, it's always a good time to go solar. <laughs> right. Yes. Of course, uh, you must make conscious decisions. Yes. When you, you know, typically whatever you spend on, you must make the best decision when it comes to your electronics, when it comes to your machines, mm. when it comes to the car you drive, the house you live in, the things that you spend your money on the most. Mm. And of course, you have to plan. You said failure to plan is planning to fail. Yes. I think that's probably the ending statement that a lot of Kenyans will be taking from this particular conversation. Thank you so much for being a part of the very first marketplace this year. Congratulations Thank you. of 2024. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I hope you've gotten a lot from this conversation as we continue to look into some of the ways that we can be cutting on costs as the year progresses. And of course, we analyze how the economy is doing. My name is Hibak Said. Have yourselves a wonderful night. <laughs>